Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is our review for Black Ink Crew. This is season six, episode nine. If you have not done so already, <clears throat> please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a whole Jaybird. Jaybird. Dun, 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 dun. And all that goodness and stuff. Hmm. Send to yourselves. Send to yourselves. My voice is going in and out, so just ignore some of the in and outness of it all. Okay, you can also follow me on IG and on Twitter at J underscore Lee's underscore corner. Do not forget to also like, comment, and share this video to follow me on IG and on Twitter. The link is in the description box below as well as all other kind of information just always go down there and look down there okay now we see this episode i mean it wasn't a lot truth be told let's just get through it okay just call charmaine because she wants to know what exactly is kitty's job kitty said she's the manager she's like well, no you know what i'm saying she's not the manager but i need her there to just help us make sure things are running smoothly. I, I we just need her help or whatever. She's there to help me, to help you. Like, she's here to just to help, okay? So, it's fine. So, when Kitty gets there, okay? Like, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. They all surprised. Now, Drea and Plug said they were sick from New Orleans. They was drunk. They was drunk, okay? Anyway, so they're like, well, hey, Kit. Kit. No, girl. Cat. What, what they meant? Kitty. Hey, Kitty, you really working? She's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So... Jess, Prince, and Fox, like, so what you gonna, like, do here? Like, when you fire from New York, you know what I'm saying? Because, and he goes, just, oh, she's the makeup artist. She's, in, she's, in, she's like, no, I'm the brand ambassador, okay? And I'm gonna be helping manage the shop. You know, just make sure the things run smoothly. And in, and in New York, I was the brand ambassador there, and I helped the shop extend itself to multiple cities, okay? It is down about, what, 560? So, yeah, I'm more than a nobody. I do feel like... People act like branding isn't a real thing. Branding is an absolute real thing. You, you the title was dumb. Brand ambassador is stupid. But you need someone in charge of marketing and branding. Any real business has that. You want someone consistently posting on your social media pages. I post on my IG and my Twitter every single day because you want to remind people I'm here hi I'm here I post videos basically every single day okay I try to post something of that's a part of branding you want people to know your name is out there and it's just smart so them acting as if oh she don't have no job I'm like y'all are not professional y'all don't know to run a business okay so just like you know, I just feel like you know what I'm saying um I'm not the owner I'm not, I'm not the owner but uh, you know given Kitty the you no know, I'm not the owner but with Kitty being here you know what I'm saying I think she don't think you no know, I think she should not be running things I'm like Jess is jealous <laughs> Jess is jealous of Kitty I don't know why because they do two different jobs Jess is literally a tattoo artist you should be worried about tattooing you know what I'm saying and, and that part of it. Kid, not worry about how y'all tattoos look. That ain't what she do. That ain't her judge. Her thing is, how is the shop running? Do people know about it? Do people know we open? Do they know we at? This doesn't get some brand. It's brand. It's two different jobs. I don't get why Jess is jealous or even um, fearful or that the, the, like Kate. Kate, who was Kate, that Kitty gonna take her job. It's just stupid to me. Anyway, so we do see Kit and Jess go into the office to have a little conversation because, you know what I'm saying, Kit is sitting in Charmaine's seat, you know what I'm saying, in the office that Charmaine and Jess share. But I'm like, Jess, that ain't your office. That's Charmaine's office. I think that the chair that's in there, you can just sit down over this and say, I'm like, I don't care. Anyway, you know what I'm saying, Jess, like, I'm a managing partner. I'm a managing partner. I came from London. She sent for me from London. And I'm here. And I'm here, okay? And then Kit say, well, you know what I'm saying? I've known Charmaine for years. And I don't know what you do, but you don't do. But I do know is Charmaine needed me for here. Needed me here for one reason or the other. So until she's back, I'm going to be here doing that she needs. And I was like, okay. Now, Kit did say if Charmaine needs me to do this branding, I'll do that. If she wants me to do, you know, imagine I'll do that too. I'm here to do what she needs me to do on a temporary basis. And I said, okay, cool. So, girl was fine. 
We see a cute little scene of Ryan with his son at the little the little kitty gym. I was it was some kitty gym stuff like working out with a basketball, having fun with his son. Quality time. And you know he was like, oh, so son, you know when I was your age, I was you no know, scared to talk to girls. So do you like what's how do you talk to girls? I just say what's your Snapchat? I'm like, oh, that's so cute. <sighs> It was just, it was a cute thing, you know, for Ryan to say how he enjoys talking to his son and, and bonding with his son and realizing his son is growing up. It was really, really cute, okay? But, yeah, that was really all that was. A cute, cute scene, and it was amazing. So, we then see Diner 4, okay? Diner 4, you know, riding around. Okay, I, I forgot I had to put you up a bit too. So they riding around and getting it, basically. You know what I'm saying? Riding around and getting it all together as brothers. And I just forgot to put a picture in. And as they're riding around, you know what I'm saying? Don bring up how, um, no, Four bring up how he's still waiting to get the little results to see if he the pappy of that girl, okay? And Don brings up how him and Abby lately have been having a few issues, okay? This see they've been hiding it well or whatever, keeping their business out the streets, keeping things on the down low. Because it's a personal business, okay? But he brings up how they're always fussing and fighting now. And he feels like whenever he fussed and fighting about whatever else, that she would consistently bring up old stuff that he done in the past, okay? And she brings it up as if he's currently doing it or whatever. And he feels like she's not, she hasn't acknowledged that he has really worked hard to change. And I say, well, I guess so. So he brings up how her car broke down and to get the car fixed, it's going to cost 16 Hundred dollars. He said when I told her how much it cost, she got mad at me and was yelling at Cousin Fussin as if I was a mechanic, as if I was the one who picked how much it cost. I don't do that. I don't make the rules or the, the prizes. The mechanic, he, he likes that. I don't get how how much her carpet cost became a fight as if it was my fault. It was kind of crazy or whatever. So, you know, I'm like, cool, cool, cool. So we then see, you know, they were actually going to pick, up, pick her up because they down to one car. So... We then see, you know, Don, Ford, and Affie out to eat. And it was a very awkward meal because, you know, you can see that Don and Affie is some tension between the two of them, okay? Some tension right there. So, you know, for like all years, how things been going or whatever. Oh, well, it's fine, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we, we had some issues here and there, whatever. There's some things, we, we be fussing or whatever. You know, she brings up how, like, I was mad because how much my car cost. And... Excuse me, when she said that, Don said, yeah, it was kind of crazy because I told you that I would pay for it. But I don't know why you wouldn't just trust me to do it. Trust you? I'm supposed to trust you? I said, oh, here we go. After all you've done to me, I'm supposed to trust you? I said, oh, here we go. So at this point in time, they fussing. Okay, they fussing. They fussing back and forth because he feel like she don't acknowledge how much he's grown. And she feel like he don't understand how much he, wrong he's done or whatever. And at this point in time, he get pissed off. He's like, I'm finna leave. So he's getting up to leave or whatever. At this point in time, they fussing at each other. And for like... Cause he like, well, I can't, I can't say, I, it's, 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 cause it was escalating, okay? And for the main part, he like, you know, you wasn't there for me when I was doing shit. You wasn't there for me, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm growing and being better. She then say, I made your ass, okay? You can't leave me, I made your ass. If you don't know where that's from. So young, and I took you in when I met you. I said, oh, Lord. When she said, I took you in when I met you, meaning... I let you come live with me because you ain't had nothing. And I'm like, I do. I feel like as a, you can't sit up here and act like Don ain't shit now. Because after all the things he did, when you was in the thick of it, and he was doing a horrible, when he was actively cheating on you, had a sad baby, all these things, you chose to stay. And I think it's crazy that when you choose to stay through the bad times and now when things seem to be good, you're upset about the old bad times. And now he's like, girl, it was just team too much or whatever. And we like, what are you? How did, you didn't make me. I made me. You know what I'm saying? And watch me make it without your ass. And he leaves. I think he was offended because she brought up how at one point she let him live with her because he, he probably didn't have much. And she, I took your ass in when I met you. That was your fault. Don't be taking in homeless strays, girl. Not, but not he your husband. Two, girl. Anyway, we do see them later on. 
at home, okay? And they still not really, you know what I'm saying, vibing or whatever. And then he like, you know what I'm saying, look, I know we be having hard times and everything, but you know what I'm saying, I want it to get better. But we can't keep sweeping things up under the rug because it's not getting any better, okay? It's not working. You know what I'm saying? So I know I fucked up in the past and everything, you know what I'm saying? But when we argue, you bring up anything that I've done previously, okay? Like, and when you down, you have to remember, I went through a lot. I went through a lot, Don, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot to get over, whatever, and I'm working on forgiving you. He like, look, you either going to, you know, like, forgive me or not, but we can't keep going about this the same way. Well, Don, you know, it takes time to forgive. He said, I get that. He said, but when are you going to start, you know, well, he said, when are you going to start taking the steps to start healing yourself so we can be better? Meaning... You mad within yourself. It ain't really at me no more. And you just, just you, you keeping it inside or whatever. So you need to heal you to make us be okay. Like, when will you take the steps to do that? And she was like, you know, I, what he said made sense in my opinion. And I also feel like you married that man. <laughs> you married him knowing the dirt he did. So... If you were not over it, why did you marry him? Why would you wait these years after y'all been married when now he ain't doing shit and now you mad? I'm a girl. <sighs> anyway, he said they need to get, you know, get things figured out or whatever because they can't keep him doing it. And I'm like, fine. And she said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know, Don. Cool. We see Kitty and not Kitty and Don. Kenny and Ryan have a, little, have a little dinner. Mainly because she can, you know, fuss about what's going on over there at Second City. And I know, when you can't be out, don't be telling Ryan my business. I do think what she was telling Ryan wasn't that bad. Um, but I do think Charmaine <laughs> may be pissed when she get back home. Anyway, this is messy over there, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of empty space over there, whatever. And they be, they be just sitting around. And Ryan said, it sound like a typical, you know what I'm saying, um begin a shop, you know, if people don't really know what to be doing or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and I'm like, that's, that's very true, and so I don't, you know, it's just kind of weird, I just don't get it or whatever, you know what I'm saying, but he like, well, have you talked to Charmaine, though, like, have you told, I like how Ryan makes sure when anyone comes to him about stuff over there, he say, well, have you talked to Charmaine, because it's her shop, I talked to Charmaine or whatever, so, well, not yet, I don't want to stress her out about her right now, because she got a lot going on or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and, and but if I can make it in, in New York, I can make it here, okay? I can make it anywhere. And he said, okay, cool, cool, cool. So they were just talking or whatever. And Ryan do bring up how I'm saying, he said the thing between him and Kitty, the, rela the relationship between him and Kitty is that, you know, when they talking, she bite back. You know what I'm saying? She got a real spunky, you know, a little spunk to her. I think that is a very attractive thing in people. Me and people who I vibe with, it's because we give it to each other, okay? And it's, you know, it's, it's the whole thing whole thing. Anyway, we also see Charmaine and Nika's back. Okay, she come back. She had to go to her little, uh, her ultrasound appointment. She was, at that point in time, 20 weeks pregnant. And I remember, because they showed the video from Nick's phone. And I'm like, oh, that's the footage that she released um, announcing the pregnancy. So I'm like, okay, so this is around the time or whatever. And she rings up how you're saying she just feels like um, her mom has a front row seat to her life. You know, been up in heaven and how, you know, it's still hard for her or whatever. But she gonna keep she gonna keep on trucking, baby. My voice went all the way out. I can't get hot. Keep on trucking, okay? She gonna keep on trucking. And you know what I'm saying, Hernie? They, they're a good unit. You know what I'm saying? I think they're a whole good unit, and it's cool. So Kitty gets to the shop, and no one's there. She's like, no one's here. The lights are still on from yesterday, or whatever. It's food and stuff that left out on the table. It's a whole mess. I'm like, just saying here. Like, I don't get. If she's the manager, like, how is she? Like, how is stuff messy already? It's 11 a.m. I'm like, that's kind of true. Anyway, we then see the, the, they start showing up, okay? Where everyone but Jess shows up, basically. And they're like, Kitty's really here because Dre is back for the first time. Plug it back up for, for the first time. Now, I think either Prince or Fly called Kitty Cat. And she was like, no, it's Kitty. And I'm like, girl, I don't talk no shit. Anyway, you know, that girl, I can't believe she here. Like, oh, uh, and she in Charmaine's office. Uh, uh, uh. And Kit hears a little bit of it. Okay, so now we know. Hey, guys, can we talk like over here real quick? Can we talk over here real quick or whatever? They're like, sure. So she gets down to business. Like, you know, I want her to know that. You know what I'm saying? I've been here for a week. I've been here for a week. And we've only had two clients. Um, what's 
that about? Well, we don't work, you know, since office hours, said uh, uh, Fly. And she's like, I, I get that. I said, you know, I get that. She's like, but this is a business. We're supposed to make money here, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know what I'm saying, how is anyone here helping the brand grow? Like, Charmaine should not be the only one working to make the business become something, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's kind of crazy. So, I think we should take walk-ins. What? What? Walk-ins? Uh, uh, Dread then said, you know, I am an appointment only, you know, tattoo artist, whatever. I was booked, you know, out before I came here. That's beneath me. That's like having a, 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 a five-star chef, you know what I'm saying, flipping burgers at McDonald's. If a five-star chef is at a restaurant where no one is working and no one's making any money, he would have to go to somewhere else that makes money. And if all he has is the McDonald's to flip some burgers, he gonna go flip some some gourmet burgers, okay? My thing is, uh, Dre, we seen you do, what, two tattoos? And I feel like if you are an appointment-only tattoo artist, but no one is setting appointments, you ain't that good. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like a girl And, you know, to be like, that's beneath us. I'm like, How? How? You're, how? How? If I want to come to you and get my name spelled out and it costs 50 bucks, how is it beneath you to do a tattoo that, why, so you only can do expensive tattoos? That's what, okay. I, I understand that artists get to a point to where they cost that amount of money, but no one's booking y'all. If she's been there for a week and y'all have only had two clients, no one's booking y'all. Y'all ain't, are y'all even tattoo artists? Girl, the fuck about it. Anyway, so, kid, like, well, you know what? At the end of the day, we're taking walk-ins. If you don't like it, you can leave. You don't have to work here, whatever. You know what I'm saying? There'll be no, we're, we're taking walk-ins. You know, there are no kids allowed. Because then when she got in the first time, Prince son was there just all over the place. And I, I would not want to go to a tattoo shop where there are like toddlers running around. I think at Ryan's shop his son is old enough to where he out the way. He's sitting over there on the game. He like he like thirteen. I I think that's okay for a minute. Not all day now. Not all day. But I feel like yo two year old should not be round here sliding around on the, the, the rolling chairs. That should not happen. Okay. So no kids allowed and no lounging around the shop. You should be here doing something. Checking also everybody need to post daily on social media about the shop. Okay. And if you don't like it, bye bye. I did not excuse me see an issue with what kid said. I get out they can have an issue with how she said it. Okay, because Kit has a whole arrogance about her, but I get what she said is what you have to do for business. I I tell people all the time, how did my channel grow so fast in my first year? Because I posted every single day. I'm now getting back into posting every single day because I fell off because I was just tired. But, you know, you have to consistently um, promote yourself, okay? And that's just what you should do. The friends I have who have, who have um, bitches, I'm like, I don't know. Why y'all don't post about y'all stuff on y'all social medias every day? Because it's called promotion. This is kind of crazy. So Kit is doing what a brand dean person would tell you to do. Oh. Anyway, so we then see Jess go do a tattoo. Okay, let's see the tattoo. Boom. Okay, that's what it was. You know, she bring up how she's hurt that kid is there, you know what I'm saying, messing up stuff or whatever. And she has this, she's in her funds because, you know what I'm saying, to her. Again, she still feels like she's a manager. And she's like, it's her shop. So she's in her, she's in her feelings a little bit. And she really is in her feelings with Charmaine, with Charmaine more than Kit. And she said, and I just know people like Kitty who will always try to manipulate people. But she is not going to, you know, manipulate me. I am not going down without a fight. I don't think Kit care to... You can tattoo, she can't. Boom. Our girl. Charmaine, get back to the shop. Okay, she get back to the shop and everything. And Jess is there like, oh my God. Charmaine, we need to talk. What's going on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk to you because you know, I want the shop to be back to how I was before. So she wanted to talk to Charmaine. To make the shop how it was before. I say, girl, fine. And we can maybe send Kitty back. I say, I don't think Kitty going nowhere. They brought Kitty from New York to Chicago. Kitty not here for a couple days. She not. They brought Kitty here to be on the show. 
Kitty like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy you're here. Oh my God, look what I've done. So Kitty had bought like some dividers. She bought like a, 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 a um divider that you put between like two tattoo stations, mainly to give the person who's getting a tattoo a little bit of privacy. Now, it wasn't like, you know, completely, you know, I can't see through it or whatever. It's like you can see through it if you like looking through the holes or whatever. But it's a little bit of privacy, you know what I'm saying? Just so that you can kind of see through what's happening, but not like see the nipple all the way through. I think it was smart. I do any other shop that you see, there's always some kind of separation between one chair and the other. So it was smart. You know what I'm saying? She also has some merch for Charmaine. And she went, oh my God, I didn't even, I didn't think about that. So Charmaine, like, again, you're bringing up things that make the bitches better and that I was not thinking about. She's doing branding shit, okay? Duh. Duh, okay? Anyway, so then Charmaine then said, well, Kitty, I want you to stay here on a permanent basis because I did you know you're you're already imp implementing things that to me I you know that I need you know what I'm saying I'm like she's smart girl anyway at this point in time Kitty and just fussing mainly because <laughs> they don't like each other you know what I'm saying to be told and she's like oh my god let's no way just stop all you did was bring some some dividers that's really stupid but just you didn't do it it was it was dumbness on both sides, okay? So at this point in time, Charmaine goes and talks to Jess. Who's upset? My issue is really with, is more you than Kit, you know what I'm saying? Because you were here for a time, whatever, and I thought I was the one here to mess the shop, whatever, and you kind of replaced me, whatever. You know, if I was the one brought here from London to run the shop, why would you bring someone else in to do that job? And Charmaine, look, you know what I'm saying? I get how you feel or whatever, but... I didn't bring you here to like question me. Like I did not bring you here to like to for me to have to run by my dis run my decisions by you. Okay, it's not what is going. It's not what's gonna happen. I'm saying, um, uh, I don't have to talk to you before I make a decision. Um, everyone here needs to follow the line. Point blank. Period. Well, you know what? It's either me or Kitty, okay? Because I feel undermined. Not when. Why am I even here? And she said, "Well, look. You know what I'm saying my name was on the lease. I am the boss." The shop is in my name. I don't have to consult, to consult anyone um, of the shop or whatever. And fine. I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm over this scrap or whatever. I'm saying you and Kitty can run the shop and I'm done. And she leaves. Look, I don't care. At all. Um, because I feel like, girl, <sighs> go back to London. You mad that someone came in to, to, to manage a shop who can't tattoo. Who she can't, you can, you can make all the money. And the truth be told, like, were you really, what were you doing? No one had clients. No one. And then the one client she did, she did not even do client at the shop. She did it somewhere else. I'm like, girl, I don't care. And the episode goes off with Don saying he know he fucked up a lot or whatever. But him and Abby, Abby need to work it out. He get home and she leaves him a dear John letter with, with the wedding ring saying how she wants a divorce. Dear John. Dear John, by the time you really realize, girl, by the time you really realize, oh, my voice is gone. By the time you really realize, I'll be gone. I was trying to sing it, but I can't. If you don't remember the TV show, Dear John, um, it was by the wife who left her husband by notes. So, Abby did that. She left him in a note saying I want a divorce and left her wedding rings, and then that was it. And it went off. Girl, I'm done. That's it. Peace.